Greetings, pilgrims, and welcome back to the Polygon Pilgrimage. In today's episode, we're continuing from last episode where we were looking at how to sculpt the wrinkles in our pillow object here. And I wanted to show you a couple things that I've spent some time with it, a few things that I've learned. Uh, the first tip that was given to me is you got to make sure you have your right mat, mat cap. A little hard to say. Down here, uh, this is one that was recommended to me from Zebro. I'll have all the links in the description at the bottom of the video, but this is really amazing. This guy has some incredible stuff, incredible work to begin with, but then the mat caps that he shares are really great. This one I really like, the modeling clay. And as you can see here, applied to our object, it lets you really see the light and shadow really well, and it just makes working so much easier. Now, the next thing that I've learned is you need the right brush. I've been using a lot of the standard brushes and the clay buildup and the clay. These are great brushes. But, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with using brushes that people have designed for specific purposes. Uh, for instance, these brushes here that I was uh, recommended to by a friend, the Selwi, not quite sure how to pronounce that, Selwi brushes. There are three of them that are really amazing for specifically working with cloth and fold. And I've found my favorite to be the Fold B number two. And this is the brush that we're going to be working with today. So now that we've been introduced to the uh, mat cap and the brush, uh, let me show you some things I learned about the brush. Uh, first of all, it doesn't behave the way I was originally expecting it to. Uh, unlike a standard brush or a clay tubes brush, I was uh, sitting here and I would you know, do a quick stroke and it would only go so far. And I thought, oh, that's odd. But if you notice the, the little line that kind of traces after my cursor, that's the lazy mouse feature which is included in this brush. And if you end up using the uh, stroke to go about twice as far as you would expect, and I kind of just stretch it out like that, it really ends up uh, giving you what you want because what it's doing is it's averaging the result across the stroke. So I kind of do like that, and then I go back and add, add some material on top of those areas, and boom, you really start to get a nice result quickly once you understand how the brush is working. That's an important thing to really understand the tool so that you can use it well. And the other thing that I've learned is to create a successful fold, what you need is both the hills and the valleys, so to speak. So I'm going to also change my brush size here and I'll do a valley and I'll do a valley over here. Can I come from here to create those creases? But now what makes a crease is also the positive material that's next to it. So you have to follow that up with some positive material, kind of tracing that. I'll do the same thing here. And then uh, the uh, other thing that you have to do in combination with this is you don't just leave them alone. I've found that in order to really control how sharp these details are, you just drop back in the subdivision levels. So I'm going to go down to three, up my brush size a bit. And I want to keep the center area here pretty clean. So like these here, I don't really want these. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth those almost out of existence on the lower subdivision levels. Drop my smoothing down to a little bit something less intense. And if I go along the edge here, I can kind of feather the result of keeping my corners, but then feathering the result as it approaches the center of mass. And now as I move up in the subdivision levels, you'll see there's still a little bit of cleanup to do might not be able to see on the video here, but I can see on the monitor. A little bit of cleanup to do as we work our way back up to the full result. And now we have what we wanted all along is, as we discussed in our first video of our details, we want the edges to have some uh, folding detail, the center to be pretty clean. So now over here, you see these, you can see at that angle, these over here need some cleanup. They look really good on the edge, but when I turn, there you go, it, it kind of gives it away. So that harkens back to the fact that with the right mat cap, as you drag around, you'll get to see the right light and darkness uh, values and those, those kind of clues as to how your model is working currently. And that will tell you ahead of time before you have to spend time baking things out and testing it. You know, you can kind of test it right here in ZBrush. You can see the result. You know what you're working with right away, and it saves a whole lot of time and effort. So now I've just gone ahead and cleaned these up a little bit. And those look pretty good. They're 
that need, need some love still yet, but we get the idea behind how to use the brush. So let me do a quick cut here and I will show you uh, what I ended up with. All right, so here we are with uh, what I'm gonna call my final pillow. And as you can see, uh, the brush did some great work for me and uh, I did some great work with the brush rather. And you can really see some nice points of tension here as it moves inward towards the center on the edges here. I was able to get some of those Y shapes and all the different things I was talking about in my uh, research video on what is it that we're going to do. Figure out what we're going to do, figure out how we're going to do it, and then go ahead and do it. And some of these details are pretty good, but I do think that they need to be a little bit more stark. As I mentioned earlier in another video, that uh, you have to understand, especially for a white object and especially for an object that's going to be seen from quite a distance, maybe probably about this or so when it comes to game time, these details need to be strong enough to be seen from that distance and to really hold their own in a normal map on a purely white object. So, but this still accomplishes what we wanted to do. We have all of our, all of our seams and all of our uh, wrinkles all along the outside edge. We leave the center alone so that it has a chance to have um, some texture or maybe a pattern or two going across it. And I do want to go back and adjust these a bit, like I said, to deepen the grooves a bit. And also I'm going to spend some time to smooth out these edges and make it a little softer, more pillow-like because it's still retaining a lot of the hard shape from the initial object. But I can do that easily with some of the move brushes and some of the pinch and pull brushes and still keep all of my nice sculpting detail. So once again, I hope you guys really enjoyed this and uh, I hope that it was helpful to you. I will have all of the links in the description for both the brush and for the mat cap. And I encourage you guys to check out more that those artists have to offer. It's great when we all offer things to each other so that we can all make all of our work better. And that's what I'm really pushing for with the whole pilgrimage is just encouraging you guys. You guys encourage me and uh, we all get better. And as a result, the art gets better. And you'll hear me say that a lot because it's really truly what I believe in. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever you feel like doing. If you feel it was helpful, let me know. If there's something that you did not find helpful or something that you want to know more about, let me know as well. I'm open to it and uh, we'll try and make the whole thing better. So as always, enjoy the quote at the bottom of the page and I will see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.